How many animals can you identify? Easy question, right? Well, sure you know several animals well known, but the animals in this list are others are not. These are not just any old animals. These are surprising or interesting creatures that exist on Earth and may have already passed you by without you ever realizing it. It's always a wonder when you see an animal you've never seen before. Some are similar to other species, while others are just distinctly different in their world. They live amongst other animals and some live in the most remote and vulnerable environments on Earth. Here are 20 animals you didn't know existed. Number 20. Dominga Dominga, a Peruvian spectacled bear, has been through a lot in her life, so it's not surprising that she lost her fur. When Dominga was a little cub, wildlife traffickers killed her mother and took her and her sister from the Amazon rainforest in Peru. The people trying to sell them probably wanted to sell them as pets or use them in shows, but officials were able to save them in time. But Dominga and her sister were too young to just be set free in the wild, so a zoo in the Andes Mountains offered to take them in. The zoo meant well and tried to give Dominga and her sister a good home. But the zoo couldn't make up for the fact that they had to leave their natural home. Dominga and her sister were put in a small zoo in the mountains because there was nowhere in Peru to put animals that had been taken this way. One of the problems with living in such a small place in the mountains is that it wasn't their natural environment. Dominga still had her sister though, but years later, Dominga's sister was in a terrible accident and got caught in some fencing. Even though it's unclear what happened, she died from her wounds. Before we begin, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 19. Red-Lipped Batfish The red-lipped batfish is a strange fish. The red-lipped batfish lives at the bottom of reefs or on the ocean floor. It usually lives in sandy places. It is similar to other batfish but only lives in the Galapagos Islands. Around Galapagos, they live in the Pacific Ocean at depths of 3 to 76 meters or on the edges of reefs up to 120 meters deep. The red-lipped batfish has a white stomach and a body coloration that is light brown on the front and grayish on the rear. A dark brown stripe formed of brown dots that runs from the head down to the back of the tail is typically seen on the upper side. The red-lipped batfish has a brownish color on its snout and horn. As its name suggests, the batfish also possesses bright, almost fluorescent red lips that appear to have recently consumed a gory meal or sporting some vivid lipstick. Another peculiar characteristic of the red-lipped batfish, the batfish's fins are more suited to serve as pseudo-legs than swimming down the seafloor in search of food. These legs are employed for movement and perching as it looks about. It possesses an elysium, a feature on its head that is supposed to be used for drawing animals. The species primarily consume other small fish and small crustaceans like shrimp and mollusks is an insectivore and a piscivore. Number 18. Goblin Shark the very strange-looking goblin shark has a long, pointed snout and a lot of long, sharp teeth. On the other hand, the fish lives deep in water and doesn't hurt people. The goblin shark has a shovel-shaped nose, a flabby body, and a weakly developed lower lobe on the end of its tail. One thing that makes the goblin shark stand out is that its mouth sticks out. The species was named after Alan Oston, who lived from 1853 to 1915 and was an English collector of Asian wildlife, businessman, and sailor. Bio Lens and Watkins 2003. The species lives near the bottom of the ocean, up to about 1200 meters deep. People have caught the goblin shark in different parts of the Pacific, Atlantic, and Indian Oceans. In Australia, it has been seen off the coasts of New South Wales, Tasmania, and maybe even South Australia. When it eats, the goblin shark's jaws move forward faster than any other shark species. The bottom of the nose has a lot of holes. These pores are the outside openings of the organs that sense electricity, called the ampullae of Lorenzini. Most likely, the goblin shark finds its prey by being able to sense electric fields. Number 17. The Panda Ant An intriguing bug with a misleading name is the panda ant. It is a species of velvet ant, which are not ants at all but wasps instead, not a panda. The panda ant receives its name from its distinctive black and white coloring, fluffy and reminiscent of a panda. 
The females are restricted to the ground and are mistaken for huge ants because they lack wings, whereas the males have massive wings that allow them to fly. Because of this severe dimorphism, it has been challenging for scientists to determine whether a male and female are members of the same species. Male panda ants can lift females in the air while mating thanks to their wings. Panda ants are tiny, measuring a little around an inch long. Despite having a pleasant appearance, panda ants have terrible stings. Since it's technically a wasp rather than an ant, other predators are warned to stay away by its aposmatic colors and patterns. Even though it's occasionally referred to as the cow killer ant, only the female is wingless, and the harvester ant species that can kill a two-pound mammal with just six stings has the distinction. These wasps are solitary, do not have nests, or live in colonies. They are also not aggressive. They can be found in both Argentina and Chile. However, because the panda ant is parasitic, it lays its eggs on or close to the larva or pupa of another ground-nesting insect. When the eggs hatch, the young exploit the larva as a food source. Number 16. Atreida choana isleti. One of the longest typhlonectids is the Traco choana isleti, with the hollow type measuring 738 millimeters overall and subsequent specimens surpassing 1 meter in length. Light blue gray wrinkled skin with a paler ventral portion. There is a white patch on the ventral side of the head, right between the anterior annuli and the mandibles. More olive gray is seen along the mouth's edge and the tip of the snout. The largest tetrapod without lungs is A. isleti, which makes it unique. Fleshy tissue flaps as a permanent seal for the choanal openings. Only two specimens of A. trado choana isleti. The other specimen is likely from Brazil. The holotype is simply annotated. The first specimens were described in 2011 by Hugmoed and colleagues, one from the Madeira River near the border of Brazil and Bolivia, the other from the Amazon River mouth, both with geographical information and observations from the field. Although it was speculated that it was aquatic, the live individuals were discovered in lowland, warm, turbid waterways, refuting their theory that they preferred highland locations with cold, swift water. Given the wide range of specimens and observations, including a large female discovered in a tidal pool at low tide close to the bellum on the Atlantic coast, there is still a lot to be understood about the species' distribution which is unquestionably wide. Number 15. Umbonia crassicornis Umbonia crassicornis is one of a large number of species that are collectively referred to as thorn bugs in common prayerlands. It belongs to the family Membracidae and is found all over the world. The adult has an average body length of about 10 millimeters, 0.39 inches. This species varies in size, color, and shape, particularly the pronotal horn of men, which is more inclined posteriorly than the horns of females and typically slightly extended epically. Males of this species have a pronotal horn that is more expanded epically. In southern Florida, an insect known as the thornbug can occasionally affect ornamental and fruit trees. Nymphs and adults will cluster together tightly around twigs, branches, and even tiny tree trunks when there is a strong infestation. Even though birds and other predators are fooled into thinking it is a thorn because of its length and the fact that it is practically perpendicular, this thorn-like pronotum deters them from eating it. The adult is often green or yellow, with lines that are reddish and markings that are brownish. This species can be found from northern South America down to Mexico and Florida in the United States. Three additional species belong to this genus that can be found in various parts of the United States. It's most commonly found on ornamental and fruit trees native to subtropical regions. Number 14. Lowland Streaked Tenric Tropical rainforest areas are home to lowland streaked tenrics, while highland streaked tenrics can be found in both tropical rainforest and savanna habitats. Their ranges were not expected to overlap, but in 2000, coexistence was discovered in the diverse ecosystem of the Mahatsinjo forest, leading scientists to conclude that they were distinct species rather than subspecies. Lowland striped tenrics have four primary longitudinal yellow stripes covered in black and yellow quills. Three of these yellow stripes are on the body, with one running along the middle of the rostrum. Two stripes are located down the middle of the sides of the body, and the third is down the center of the dorsum. The highland shrieking tenric has a similar striped pattern in black and white quills, but the rostrum is not striped. Given that the parents of this species are known to be extremely protective, the black and white pattern may be used to simulate young tenric ecaudatus, 
Both species' stripes may have evolved as a kind of camouflage while foraging. Hemicentitis is a genus that includes two species, both of which are unique to Madagascar. Highland streaked tenrigs are found in humid forests and plateau savanna boundary habitats in the central upland region of Madagascar. In contrast, the lowland streaked tenrigs are located in the rainforests on the east side of the island. Number 13. Hummingbird Hawk Moth Finding adequate food and staying alive long enough to pass on their genes are problems that all animals must overcome. Although nature has dealt with these issues countless times, it occasionally resolves the same problem in species that are only distantly related. The similar body shapes of fish and dolphins, the pointed spines of hedgehogs and porcupines, and the opposable thumbs shared by primates and possums are all examples of the phenomena known as convergent evolution. Although the hummingbird hawk orange-brown moth's hind wings are visible in flight, it looks similar to bee hawk moths in flight. Its body is black and white striped, and its forewings are grayish brown. The caterpillars can be seen from June to October, but most are usually encountered in August. They pupate in a cocoon spun near to the ground, among the foliage of the food plant or in leaf litter, and overwinter as adults in unheated outbuildings as well as in crevices and holes in walls and trees. There are times when species converge so closely that they resemble one another in an unsettling way. The hummingbird hawk moth, an insect that resembles a hummingbird so closely that it is challenging to tell them apart from a distance is a prime example. The moth not only flits around like a hummingbird, but it also appears to have feathers and a tail, both of which are just long hairs. Number 12. Glaucus atlanticus The blue glaucus is also known as the blue angel, blue dragon, sea swallow, blue ocean slug, and blue sea slug. The blue glaucus is a type of sea slug known as nudibrach which refers to mollusk larvae with a shell including snails, slugs, limpets, and sea hares. The head of the blue glaucus is striped. The sea slug has a blue side and a gray side. Countershading is the name given to this method of concealment. Its blue hue merges into the water when viewed from above. The underside's silvery gray color melds with the water's top. Predators in the air and ocean cannot harm it. A blue glaucus adult weighs between 3 and 100 grams and measures 3 centimeters, 1.2 inches. Slugs of the glaucus atlanticus have long, protruding eyes that allow them to see in all directions. Slugs in the ocean float on their backs. Sea slugs can breathe air and float thanks to a stomach bubble. It moves freely while floating with the water currents. It moves slowly by swimming, contracting its muscles, or utilizing the hairs on its feet. Each blue glaucus produces eggs and sperm. Because they are unable to fertilize their eggs, pairs must mate. They float until a mate finds them. They have to be careful not to sting one another during mating. The outcome is 10 to 20 spiral-shaped eggs. Each gender lays eggs. Eggs can float in water or adhere to adjacent objects like animal carcasses. Number 11. Mantis Shrimp The Pacific or Indian Oceans are home to most species, particularly between Africa and Hawaii. Not all 450 species of mantis shrimp, of which are there are many, live in this region. However, these two species have the most species diversity. Oceans that are tropical or subtropical are home to additional species. Crustaceans called mantis shrimp have elongated bodies and unique body compositions. They are distantly related to shrimp as well as crabs and lobsters. The most specialized part of their bodies is their front limbs, which certain species use as weapons. These species' limbs calcify, enabling the shrimp to utilize them as clubs. Some of the members of this taxonomical order of crustaceans can reach lengths of well over a foot. However, the majority are only about 4 inches long. Although this crustacean looks superficially similar to other shrimp, it behaves very differently from its relatives. Although they have large bodies, many mantis shrimps have second pairs of legs specially designed for hunting prey. Additionally, these shrimps have movable eyes that can move independently of one another, which helps them find prey more effectively. Their sophisticated eyes can perceive ultraviolet and color. This group of animals primarily inhabits rocky or sandy surfaces. They enjoy creating complicated tunnel systems or slipping into rocky niches. They remain in these safe havens for entirety of their non-hunting time. They shun cooler conditions and prefer to live in tropical and subtropical waters. Number 10. Venezuelan Poodle Moth 
The Venezuelan poodle moth is a strange, fluffy bug that has only been seen once and was not taken to a lab for testing. This moth was found in Venezuela in 2009, and people say it looks like a poodle. That is, if poodles had big wings and feathers where their ears should be. Researchers are puzzled by a Venezuelan poodle moth. The internet is confused by it, and everyone is confused at first glance. The bug looked like a cross between a big moth and a fluffy white poodle. It looks like the muslin moth, but is most likely a lepidoderon from the genus Artes. It might belong to the genus Artes, but it might not be one of the more than 20 known species in the genus. The moth is often confused online with pictures of other furry moths, like Bombix mori, and one of the anchor's colleagues speculated that the Venezuelan poodle moth bears some small resemblance to a Diaphora mendica, a tiger moth from Eurasia. Based on how long it is, the moth is about 1 inch, 2.5 centimeters long. Because of how it looks and how little information there is about it, people think it is an internet hoax. On subsequent trips to this area, the moth has not been seen again. Number 9. The Paku Fish Paku fish are referred to as the vegetarian piranha. Although they don't resemble their dreadful relatives, they have a somewhat laid-back attitude and would much sooner chew on a banana than a human. Some have been observed to nuzzle up to their owners like dogs. The broad, flat bodies of paku fish feature fins on the backs and bellies. They can grow to be many feet long and quite heavy. The majority of paku fish is solid, neutral colors like silver, gray, black, and white, although certain varieties have brighter hues, such as the red-bellied paku. They could also be marked like the black ear paku. Some paku fish species stand out from the rest, such as the downward-facing beaks and found in parrot paku. Their human-like teeth are one thing that all varieties of paku fish have in common. Paku fish have two sets of blunt molars that they utilize for breaking nuts and grinding up plants, unlike certain fish species with sharp, jagged fangs suited for slicing through their prey. Deconstructing a paku fish's lips reveals a mouth that resembles and works quite similarly to your own. Not all creatures in the ocean have as good of a set of choppers as the paku fish. The sheep's head fish is at least one other species that resemble them. These fish are infamous for biting the bait off fishermen's hooks and have large front teeth that help them crush through the shells of crustaceans. Number 8. Giant Isopod The enormous isopod is one of the oldest deep water organisms, looking like something from a bad science fiction movie. It's one of nine Bathynomus species. It's the largest isopod, a crustacean related to shrimp and crabs. The huge isopod resembles garden pill bugs. It's frequently called a big pill bug. Giant isopods aren't commonly harvested professionally, but some are served in oceanside restaurants in northern Taiwan. The immense size of the giant isopod results from a phenomenon known as deep water gigantism. Deep sea crabs and other animals grow substantially larger than shallow water ones. Giant squid and tube worms are more examples. Giant squids reach 60 feet in depth. Shallow water relatives are just 2 feet long. Some researchers believe that the size disparities are an adaptation to assist the animal deal with pressure. The gigantic isopod can grow over 16 inches, making it a big crustacean. Like the pill bug, the huge isopod has a segmented hard shell, so it's powerful and flexible. This animal can roll up to protect its fragile underside. The isopod has compound eyes with about 4,000 facets, like its land-based relative. It has a large field of view and is sensitive to quick motions. The giant isopod has large antennae to help it navigate the deep dark sea. Number 7. The Saiga Antelope The Saiga Antelope, also called a Saiga, is a type of antelope that lives in Russia and Kazakhstan. Saigas are antelopes that look pretty cool. Their bodies look like most other antelope, but their heads differ. They have two big nostrils that point down and are attached to a big nose. This nose looks a little bit like an elephant's seal nose. Males' heads are also topped with a pair of ringed horns and are almost see-through. Their fur ranges in color from red to yellow. These animals are very rare and in danger of going extinct. Researchers think their numbers have dropped by as much as 95% over the past 15 years. These antelopes are so interesting and well-suited to their environment that we should protect them. These antelopes live in grasslands, open woodlands, steppes, and semi-deserts. They try to avoid going through areas with a lot of trees. Instead, they prefer to stay out in the open, where they can see predators and run without being slowed down. For the same reason, saigas will also avoid very rocky or steep areas. 
Previously, you could find these animals from the British Isles to the Bering Strait in Central Asia. Unfortunately, their populations are now spread out in different places. A few groups live in Russia, Kazakhstan, Mongolia, and Kalmykia. Number 6. The Bush Viper Any of the eight tiny to medium-sized poisonous snake species of the genus Athurus of the Viper family, Viperidae, are referred to as bush vipers. Tropical Africa is home to bushland and forests with snakes. Adult sizes range from 16 to 30 inches, 40 to 76 centimeters. It frequently lies motionless along twigs of low trees or bushes since it is the only African viper that inhabits trees. The bush viper stalks toads and lizards at night. It has big eyes that expand wide in the dark and have vertically slit pupils. The skull is generally triangular with a short, rounded nose. The body is somewhat lean, and the neck is narrow. The scales frequently have a leaf-like shaft with a raised center pointed edge and raised center. The snake may suspend itself mid-air by wrapping its prehensile or gripping tail around a branch. The hairy bush viper, A. hispidius, has long, narrow, overlapping scales that curl upward at the ends, giving it an oddly shaggy look. It's olive green with dark blotches along the back. The rough-scaled bush viper, a light green snake with yellow bands and spiky leaf-shaped scales is also unique. Number 5. The Blue Parrotfish The blue parrotfish lives in tropical and subtropical waters in the western Atlantic Ocean and the Caribbean Sea. It's a member of the parrotfish family. Its scientific name is Scarus coruleus. The scientific name for the blue parrotfish is bluefish. Latin for bluefish. There are currently over 60 species of parrotfish in reef waters, including the blue parrotfish. They are the second largest parrotfish species in the Caribbean and are widely distributed in the southern part of the Gulf of Mexico, both in the north in Maryland, United States, and the south in North America. Reports of them have been made. The Florida Keys are only one of the southern Florida locales where the blue parrotfish is a favorite. Blue parrotfish have mostly blue coloring with a yellow spot on their heads at birth that gradually fades as they age and develop a protruding snout and more consistent blue tones. Male and female blue parrotfish often range in hue from blue to green with the gray patterns, while immature blue parrotfish are typically pale blue. Beyond their size, the blue parrotfish's scale color makes it simple to tell their age and sex at a glance. The blue parrotfish is the only individual of its species with a consistent blue hue, making it simple to recognize them. Their body is covered in broad, smooth scales. Number 4. Indian Purple Frog The Western Ghats in southern India are home to these distinctively colored purple frogs. Even though they have a relatively restricted range, this is not the main reason it took researchers so long to find them. Only two weeks a year do these frogs come to the surface, where they spend most of their lives. They can survive on a diet of food found underground, primarily termites, so they don't even need to come up for food. As bizarre as they sound, these frogs certainly appear peculiar. They always appear bloated or as though they have eaten too much. They have a head that is disproportionately small to their body and a white nose that protrudes from their face. Additionally, they have silky, deep purple skin, as I'm sure you can guess. These strange species are in jeopardy due to the deforestation of coffee, cardamom, and ginger crops. We must take active steps to ensure the survival of this species and all related animals. The rainforest is home to a wide variety of animals, and if humans continue to damage their habitats, many of them will go extinct before we even know they exist. Number 3. A Shoebill Stork their enormous shoebill bearing their name resembles a shoe. While people commonly refer to these birds as shoebill storks, they belong to Pelicaniform scientific group. As a result, they are related to pelicans, anigas, gannets, and other birds. These birds are incredibly big and may easily reach heights of over 4 feet. Their unusual beak, which resembles a shoe almost exactly, sets them apart from other species. The bill has a pointed, curved tip and sharp edges to kill and decapitate prey. The beak is not just dangerous, pointy, and shaped peculiarly. It may be up to 9.4 inches long. They have long legs that finish in broad feet, slate gray feathers, and long legs. When killing prey, these predators are surprisingly violent and fierce. They attract attention due to their unusual appearance, but many people are unaware of a few interesting facts about these fascinating birds. 
The distribution and habitat of this species are somewhat constrained. They frequently reside in freshwater swamps and marshes and are proficient hunters in watery habitats. They are found in marshes with a variety of papyrus and other plants. Papyrus, typha, and infragmites plants can be found in almost any marsh where the species is present. They are occasionally seen in rice fields and flooded agricultural areas. Number 2. Okapi These lovely beasts are a mishmash of species. They have zebra legs, horse bodies, and giraffe necks. The stripes reach the tail and the hind legs and the armpit in the front. These unusual animals have strange habits and traits, too. These endangered animals are unique. Okapis are giraffes' closest relatives. Both have many similarities. They have giraffe-like heads and necks, though not as long as a giraffe. Both have black, prehensile tongues for grabbing leaves. They're shy. Humans have trouble navigating their lush rainforest. Their big ears allow them to detect us coming and retreat before humans notice. So they weren't discovered until 1900. While we may think stripes are strong and striking, they help animals blend in. In the deep rainforest, sunlight can only partially permeate through the foliage, generating this animal's speckled, blotched, and striped pattern. Raindrops fall off their oily hair. These magnificent animals are reclusive and hard to discover in dense forests. Okapis have a sophisticated scent marking system. Their stinky feet leave a trail for other creatures to follow. Only the DRC has wild okapi. They live north and east of Congo River in central, northern, and eastern DRC. West and south of the Congo, small animal populations are widely scattered. Number 1. Narwhal Our fascination with this fanciful creature may have its roots in our fondness of the unicorn legend. The long spiral horn of the narwhal is exactly what people see growing from the unicorn. Although these lovely marine mammals capture our attention, there is still so much we don't know about them. Marine creatures called narwhals have light-colored skin speckled with numerous dark patches. They can move through the water more quickly because of their torpedo-shaped bodies, which are more hydrodynamic. The long horn that narwhal males have growing through their upper lip is a tusk that grows up to 10 feet long. Tusks can also develop in females, however they are smaller than those of males. Even before we learn anything about them, these creatures have an intriguing appearance. They have speckled skin and a long, graceful horn, making them the picture of mystery. These stunning marine mammals are more than simply wonderful though. Greenland halibut, arctic cod, cuttlefish, polar cod, squid, and shrimp are the main foods consumed by narwhal. According to scientists, they catch prey by employing a powerful suction to pull it into their mouths. It is improbable that these animals can catch prey in any other way because they only have two canine teeth, one of which is a tusk. Which animal do you love the most? Which animal would you love to see soon? Tell us in the comment section below.